Hello, I'm going to open the hearing now. Let the record show that the time is 6.05 and the public hearing is now officially open. Note that we will be recording this hearing. This hearing is for the renewal of the New Jersey Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Discharge to Surface Water Combined Sewer Overflow Permits for the Camden County Municipal Utilities Authority, the City of Camden, and Gloucester City, who often use the acronym NIGIPDES in referring to the New Jersey Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Program. My name is Joe Manick. I'm the hearing officer, and I'm a section chief in the Bureau of Surface Water and Pre-Treatment Permitting within the Division of Water Quality at the Department of Environmental Protection, otherwise referred to as the Department or NJDEP. Many Bureau staff have been involved in preparing the permits that are subject of this hearing and are also preparing for the hearing itself. Kirsten Victorella will be providing instructions on how to provide testimony today. Molly Jacoby is the case manager for all three permits. Bennett Moss will provide an overview of the subject permits. Iris Hernandez, who works for the Bureau of Construction, Payments and Administration within the Division of Water Quality, will be providing a Spanish translation. Also here today are many NJDEP staff, including Susan Rosenwinkel, Assistant Director of the Division of Water Quality, and others who are part of the CSO program or part of other NJDEP programs. I will now be providing some general information about the public hearing process, which will take about four minutes. Iris Hernandez will then present this information in Spanish. We will then provide an overview of Microsoft Teams and a short summary of the permits in English and then in Spanish. This introductory information should take about 20 minutes in total. As established in the Nijipti's regulations of the NJAC, excuse me, of the New Jersey Administrative Code at 7 colon 14A, subchapter 15, this is a non-adversarial public hearing, which means that the department is here to listen and take testimony as part of our regulatory process. The purpose of this hearing is to <clears throat> provide the public, including the affected communities, with an opportunity to be heard on these proposed draft permit actions. The department will be accepting verbal and written statements today. Please note that verbal and written statements have equal weight. So if someone is not comfortable speaking and just has a written statement prepared, they can submit it electronically where it will receive equal weight with verbal testimony. The email address for written comments is DWQ, underscore bswp at dep.nj.gov. We will now add that address to the chat. The purpose of this hearing is to receive your comments and concerns. The department will respond to all significant and relevant comments, both verbal and written, and a response to comments document, which will be issued as part of the final Nijipti's permit decisions. The permittees and each person who has submitted comments will receive an electronic copy of the final decision document, provided you give us your email address. We will also provide a copy to anyone who requests it, whether or not you submitted comments. Please be sure to leave your email address in the chat or send it to dwq underscore bswp at dep.nj.gov if you want to receive a copy. Note that the public comment period will end today, January 22nd, 2024, at 11.59 p.m. If you would like to provide verbal comments today, please put your name, organization, and email address in the chat, and I will call your name when it is your turn. When I call you, please clearly state and spell your first and last name for the record. We will have a court reporter assigned to transcribe the recorded testimony. If speakers are speaking on behalf of a particular organization, we request that you identify that organization. We want to hear from everybody, and we want to give everybody here the opportunity to speak. In view of time, uh, time limitations, I am asking each speaker to limit their testimony to five minutes. Individual speakers may only testify once until we hear from every person who is here and wishes to give testimony. If time permits and there is an opportunity at the end of the hearing and a person wants to testify for a second time, we will do our best to accommodate you. We are asking that all speakers and members of the audience respect the right of each person to be heard and refrain from any behavior that could interfere with the presentation of testimony. This hearing will end at the close of testimony or at 8 p.m., whichever occurs first. The same information I just read now, just read will now be read in Spanish by Iris Hernandez. After that, we will turn the discussion over to Kirsten Victorella, who will provide an overview in Microsoft Teams. After that, Bennett Moss will give some factual information regarding the Nijipti's permits. Iris? 
Hola, abriré, abriré la audiencia en este momento. Deje que el registro muestre que la hora es 6.05 pm y la audiencia pública ya está oficialmente abierta. Tenga en cuenta que grabaremos esta audiencia. Esta audiencia se lleva a cabo para la renovación de los permisos de descarga a aguas de superficie, desbordamiento del alcantarillado combinado del sistema de eliminación de descargas de contaminantes de Nueva Jersey, NGPDES, para la Autoridad Municipal de Servicios Públicos del Condado de Camden, Ciudad de Camden y Ciudad de Gloucester. A menudo, Usamos el acrónimo NGPDS cuando nos referimos al programa del sistema de eliminación de descarga de contaminantes de Nueva Jersey. Mi nombre es Joe Manning. Soy el oficial de la audiencia pública y el jefe de sección de la Oficina de Permisos de Agua de Superficie y Tratamiento de la División de Calidad de Agua en el Departamento de Protección Ambiental también denominado del, del, del Departamento o NGDEP. Muchos empleados de la oficina han sido involucrados en preparar estos permisos que son el tema de esta audiencia y también en preparar esta audiencia. Christine Victor Rella brindará instrucciones sobre cómo dar testimonio hoy. Molly Jacoby es la administradora de casos para los tres permisos. Bennett Moss brindará una visión general de los permisos en cuestión. Iris Hernández, que, que, quien trabaja para la Oficina de Construcción, Pagos y Administración dentro de la División de Calidad de Agua, proveerá una tra traducción en español. También hay aquí hoy muchos empleados del NGDEP, incluyendo a Susan Rosenwenko, subgeri subgerente de la División de Calidad del Agua y otras personas que son parte del programa CSO o de otros programas en el NGDEP. Ahora proporcionaremos información general sobre el proceso de la audiencia pública, lo que tomará unos cuatro minutos. Iris Hernández presentará esta información en español a continuación proporcionaremos Honaremos una descripción general de Microsoft Teams y, y un resumen breve de los permisos en inglés y luego en español. Esta información introductoria tomará unos 20 minutos en total. Como se establecen las regula, regula, regulaciones del NGPDS, el Código Administrativo de Nueva Jersey, en 7, column 14A, subcapítulo 15, esta es una audiencia pública no contenciosa, la cual significa que el departamento está aquí para escuchar y tomar testimonio como parte de nuestro proceso regulatorio. El propósito de esta audiencia es proporcionar el público interesado, incluidas las comunidades afectadas, la oportunidad de ser escuchados con respeto a estas actividades de los borradores de permisos propuestos. El departamento aceptará declaraciones verbales y por escrito el día de hoy. Tenga en cuenta que las declaraciones por escrito y las verbales tendrá la misma importancia. Así que si alguien no se siente cómodo de hablar y solamente tiene una declaración escrita preparada, puede enviarla electrónicamente y se le dará la misma importancia que el testimonio verdad, verbal. El correo electrónico para comentarios por escrito es dwq bsdp.ng.gov. Ahora añadiremos el correo al chat. El propósito de esta audiencia es recibir su comentario y preocupaciones. El departamento responderá a todos los comentarios significados y relevantes o tantos verbales como por escrito. En un documento de respuesta a comentario que se publicará como parte de las decisiones 
finales sobre permisos de NGPDS. Los permisiones my apologies, I lost track of it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Los permisiones, my apologies, I lost track of it. Y toda la persona que hayan presentado comentarios recibirá una copia electrónica del documento con la determinación final siempre que nos hayan indicado su correo electrónico. También entregaremos copias a quien los soliciten, aunque no haya enviado comentario. Asegúrese de dejar su correo electrónico en el chat o de enviarlo a dwq bajabarra bswp ahora dep.ng.gov si quieren recibir una copia. Tenga en cuenta que el periodo de comentario público finalizará hoy, enero 22, 2024 a, a las 11.59 p.m. Si desean presentar comentario público de manera de verbal hoy, escriban su nombre, organización y correo electrónico en el chat y los llevaremos y los llamaremos por su nombre cuando sea su turno. Cuando los llames, digan y del entre su nombre y apellido con claridad para el registro. Tendremos un tagui, taquigrafo judicial asignado para transcribir el testimonio grabado. Si alguien hablará en representación de la organización, les pedimos que identifique la organización. Queremos escuchar a todos y darle la oportunidad de hablar aquí. Debido al tiempo límite, les pedimos, les pido que su testimonio no sea, no exceda los cinco minutos. Cada uno solamente podrá hablar una vez hasta que escuchemos a todas las personas que están aquí y desean dar testimonio. En caso de que el, el tiempo lo permita y sea posible hacerlo al final de la audiencia, si una persona desea declarar por segunda vez, haremos todo lo posible para permitírselo. Pedimos que todos los que hablen y los miembros de la audiencia respeten el derecho de cada persona presente a ser escuchada y que inviten la conducta que pudieran interferir con su presencia del testimonio. Esta audiencia termina cuando concluye los testimonios a las 8 p.m., lo que ocurra primero, o lo que ocurra primero. Esta misma formación que acabo de leer está, será leída en español por Irene Hernández. Después le, de, le daremos la palabra a Christian Victorella, quien presentará una descripción general de Microsoft Teams. A continuación, Ben Moss, para dar información factual sobre los permisos del NGPDS. Christine. Can you yes, see the continue. PowerPoint? Oh, there we go. Okay. Hi, my name is Kirsten Victorella, and I will be speaking to you about commenting during the public hearing. In order to inform the NJDEP hearing officer of your interest in submitting verbal testimony, move your cursor around to open the team's meeting toolbar, which will appear near the bottom center of your screen. Click on the chat icon to open the meeting chat box on the side of the screen. Type your name, organization, and email address in the type a new message field at the bottom of the meeting chat box. When entering this information, Use the following format, first name, last name, organization, and email address. See below for an example. Click the send icon or press enter on your keyboard to submit your message and notify the NJ DEP hearing officer of your interest in submitting verbal testimony. To unmute or mute your microphone, toggle your microphone icon. To disable or, en or enable your camera, toggle your camera icon. If you are using a phone, you can hit star six to mute and unmute. This same information I just read will now be read in Spanish by Iris Hernandez. After that, Bennett Moss will provide an overview of permits that were issued. Hola, mi nombre es Christian Victorella y les estaré hablando sobre cómo comentar durante la audiencia pública. Para informar al oficio de la audiencia pública del NGDEP sobre sus interés en dar testimonio verbal, 
mueva su curso para que aparezca la barra de herramientas de reuniones de Teams en la parte inferior de su pantalla. Haga clic con el icono de chat para abrir el Meeting Chat a un lado de su pantalla. Escriba su nombre completo y el nombre de la organización que represente y su correo electrónico en el campo que dice Type a Message. Escriba un mensaje nuevo. En la parte inferior del Meeting Chat, cuando escriba esa información, use formato nombre más apellido más organización más correo electrónico. Vea el ejemplo abajo. Haga clic en el icono o presione la tecla Enter en su teclado para enviar su mensaje y notificar el oficial de la audiencia pública sobre su interés en dar testimonio verbal. Para activar o silenciar el micrófono, activa el icono del micrófono. Para desactivar o activar la cámara, activa el icono de la cámara. Si, si se ha conectado por teléfono, para activar y silenciar su micrófono, por favor, oprima el asterisco 6. Esta misma información se acaba de leer. De leer. Será leída ahora en español por Iris Hernández. Después, Bennett Moss presentará un resumen de los permisos que se emitieron. Hello, my name is Bennett Moss of the Bureau of Surface Water and Pretreatment Permitting. I'd like to give you some background on the subject of today's hearing, the renewal of the Najipti's permits for the Camden County Municipal Utilities Authority permit number NJ002682, the City of Camden permit number NJ018812, and the Gloucester City permit number NJ018847, where the draft permits were issued on November 9th, 2023. All permits are posted on the NJDEP's Division of Water Quality CSO website. The common period will end at 11.59 p.m. on January 22nd, 2024, in accordance with NJAC 7 14A-1510 and 1514. The individual Najipti CSO permits for the combined sewer systems of the City of Camden and Gloucester City are hydraulically connected to the Camden County Municipal Utilities Authority, abbreviated to CCMUA, Delaware Number no. One Water Pollution Control Facility. Combined sewer overflows, or CSOs, are discharges from combined sewer systems. Combined sewer systems are sewers that were designed many decades ago to collect rainwater and snow melt runoff, domestic sewage, and industrial wastewater in the same pipe. Combined sewer systems are still present in certain older cities in the state. CCMUA owns and operates the wastewater treatment facility named the Delaware Number no. One Water Pollution Control Facility. The facility treats, treats wastewater collected in a 226 square mile service in area in New Jersey, which includes the city of Camden and Gloucester City as customer communities. CCMUA also owns and operates one CSO outfall located in the city of Camden. CCMUA, the City of Camden, and Gloucester City own separate portions of one hydraulically connected combined sewer system. The City of Camden and Gloucester City do not own or operate any wastewater treatment facilities. Dry weather wastewater flows from the City of Camden and Gloucester City are conveyed to the CCMUA Delaware No. 1 Water Pollution Control Facility for treatment. During wet weather events, when the conveyance capacity of the collection system and or the wastewater treatment facility is exceeded, excess combined sewage flows pass through CSO outfalls. In the city of Camden, there are 23 CSO outfalls. One outfall is owned and operated by CCMUA and discharges combined sewage into zone three of the Delaware River. The city of Camden owns and operates 22 CSO outfalls that discharge combined sewage to zone three of the Delaware River, the Cooper River, and Newton Creek. Gloucester City owns and operates seven CSO outfalls that discharge combined sewage to Zone 3 of the Delaware River and Newton Creek. To comply with federal and state CSO regula regulations, the City of Camden, Gloucester City, and CCMUA have committed to meet the requirements of the presumption approach, which requires elimination or capture of a minimum of 85% of the annual average combined sewage collected in the system during wet weather. As part of achieving this, 
the City of Camden will complete inspection and cleaning of 100% of its collection system by October 31st, 2024, while Gloucester City will complete outfall cleaning by the end of 2025. As a result of these activities, new system flow monitoring will be conducted. Additional design details of future CSO control measures will be a forthcoming as a result of updated flow monitoring. LTCP projects proposed to be required by these permits include designing and implementing the separation of combined sewer neighborhoods in Pensacon, as well as other improvements that will reduce street flooding in the neighboring Kramer Hill section of Camden. As per the long-term control plan and proposed in Egypti's permit requirements, these projects and others are projected to, com to be completed over multiple Najipti's permit cycles. The sim same information I just read will now be read in Spanish by Iris Hernandez. After that, we will return to Joe Manick and begin taking testimony. Hola, mi nombre es Ben Moss, de la Oficina de Permisos de Agua, de Superficie y Tratamiento. Les quiero compartir algo de información de fondo sobre el tema de la audiencia de hoy. La rene renovación de los permisos del NGPDS para, lo, para el permiso número NG0026182 de la Autoridad Municipal de Servicios Públicos del Condado de Candom. La ciudad de Candom, número de permiso NG0108812 y la ciudad de Cluster, número de permiso NG0108847, donde se emitieron los permisos pre preliminares del el 9 de noviembre de 2023. Todos los permisos están publicados en el sitio web de CSO, de la División de Calidad de Agua del NGDEP. El periodo de comentario terminará el 22 de enero de 2024 a las 11.59 pm. De acuerdo con los artículos 7, 14 a a 15.10 y 15.14 del Código Administrativo de Nueva Jersey. Los permisos individuales de superficie de NGPDS para los sistemas de alcantarillado combinado de la ciudad de Cando y la ciudad de Gloucester están hidráulicamente conectados a Delaware número uno, instalación de control de la contaminación del agua de la Autoridad Municipal de Servicio Público del Condado de Candom, abrivado como CCMUA. Los desbordamientos de alcantarillado combinado o CSO son descargadas de sistemas de alcantarillado combinado. Los sistemas de alcantarillado combinado son alcantarillas que se diseñaron hace décadas para recolectar el agua de lluvia y de cielo. Aguas residuales domésticas y aguas residuales industriales en la, en la misma tubería. Los sistemas de alcantarillado combinado todavía están presentes en algunas ciudad, ciudades más antiguas del estado. CCMUA posea y opera una planta de tratamiento de aguas residuales llamada Delaware número 1, instalación de control de la contaminación del agua. La instalación trata las aguas residuales recolectadas en una área de servicio de 250, 226 millas cuadradas en Nueva Jersey, que incluye a la ciudad de Camden y la ciudad de Gloucester como comunidades de clientes. CCMUA también posea y operan en un emisario de CSO localizada en la ciudad de Candom. CCMUA, la ciudad de Candom y la ciudad de Gloucester posean partes separadas de un sistema de alcantarillado combinado conectado hidráulicamente. Ni la ciudad de Camden o la ciudad de Gloucester posean ni operan ninguna instalación de tratamiento de aguas residuales. Los flujos de aguas residuales durante tiempo seco de la ciudad de Camden y la ciudad de Gloucester se transportan a la planta de tratamiento de aguas residuales Delaware número 1 de CCMUA. 
cuando se excede la capacidad de transporte del sistema de recolección y o la planta de tratamiento de aguas residuales, el exceso de aguas residuales combinada pasa a través de los emisarios de los OSC. En la ciudad de Candom hay 23 emisarios de CSO. Un emisario es poseado y operado por CCMUA y descargan aguas residuales combinadas a la zona 3 de Río Delaware. A la ciudad de Camden posea y operan 22 emisarios de CSO que descargan aguas residuales combinadas en la zona 3 de Río Delaware, el Río Cooper y el arroyo, y el arroyo New Inn. La ciudad de Gloucester posea y opera siete emisarios de CSO que descargan aguas residuales combinadas en la zona 3 del río del Delaware y Arroyo New Inn. Para cumplir con las regulaciones estales y federales de CSO, la ciudad de Camden, la ciudad de Gloucester y la CCMUA se han comprometido a cumplir con los requisitos del enfoque de presión de que sigue la emisión a la captación de un mínimo de 85% del promedio anual de aguas residuales combinadas recolectada en el sistema durante el clima humado, húmedo. Perdón. Como parte de lograr esto, la ciudad de Camden completará la inspección y limpieza de 100% de su sistema de recolección antes del 31 de octubre del, mil, del 2024. Mientras que la ciudad de Gloucester completará la limpieza de los emisarios para el final del 2025. Como resultado de esta actividad, el nuevo sistema se realizará un monitoreo de flujo. Próximamente se publicará detalles de diseños adicionales de futuras medidas del control de CSO como resultado del monitoreo de flujo actualizado. Los proyectos LTCP propuesto que serán requeridos por este permiso incluye el diseño e implementación de la separación de alcantarillado combinado en vecindario en Pensoque, así como otras mejores, mejoras que reducir, reducirán las inundaciones de las calles en la sección vecina Cramers Hill de Candom. Según el plan de control a largo plazo y los requisitos propuestos de los permisos del NGPDS, se prevé financiar estos proyectos y otros entre varios ciclos de permiso de NGPDS. Esta información, esta misma información se acaba de leer, ahora se lea leída en español por Iris Hernández. Después volveremos con John Manick y empezaremos a tomar testimonio. Gracias. Ahora empezaremos a recibir testimonio. All right. Thank you. Um, we are begin. We are ready to begin taking testimony. And I see we have uh, Jim Cummings from Urban Promise. Uh, you can go first. And thank you for adding your email address. Thank you. <coughs> um, do you hear me? First of all. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak to this issue and also um, I want to thank the folks at the CCMUA, Scott and the leadership um, for many years. Uh, they have been really friends of the work that uh, my organization does uh, on the urban waters and in Camden. Um, It's been about 15 years since we discovered just the joy of going out <clears throat> on the Tidal Cooper River into the back channel, uh, the wildlife, uh, the eagles, the egrets, the great blue herons, uh, the shad that are migrating. Um, all of this, obviously these waters are cleaner than they've been in 50 years. Um, but as you know, there's a problem uh, and that's <laughs> combined sewer outflows. Um, The, uh, I submitted a uh, comment uh, it, it, by, by email, so I, I won't really go into that, but what I want to say is the cost is an issue that really does concern me and how that's to be distributed. 
The, CC, the CCMUA is a shared asset um, for all of the ratepayers uh, of the system. And as a shared asset, there's uh, both uh, advantages and there's cost involved. And without a doubt in my mind, the, sh the cost as to uh, helping to mitigate, eliminate the impact of the combined sewer outflows should be shared by every rate player, uh, rate payer uh, of the system. Um, and I know that's been a question as to how that's going to be done. Um, and the other thing I just want to mention um, is I, I think there's been billions of dollars spent to bring us onto and near the water in the back channel, the tidal Cooper River. I have no idea what it's costing Sitco oil to remediate Petty's Island to make it a nature preserve. Um, I, I know the remediation of the Harrison Avenue landfill uh, there at the back channel was probably, I think you could figure over a hundred million dollars. Uh, the park that was built, the beautiful park by New Jersey DEP, the Kramer Hill Waterfront Park with a kayak ramp that allows me to bring my boats right onto the water. Um, so I, I, I do find there's like some conflict here in just the timing. Um, we're doing so much, investing so much to bring people out onto these waters um, and yet the timeline to deal with the contaminants um, seems that uh, there's a struggle there in my head as to why that's not being really, really rushed uh, to keep up with all of the work that's been done to bring us out onto the water. I, I started a wooden boat building program in Camden, Urban Boat Works. We build canoes, we build kayaks with our students that live in the city. In the summer, we hire students at River Guides that give guided tours on the Tidal Cooper into the back channel. Um, so please, timeline, do this as quick as you can. Uh, I don't understand all the engineering. I know it's involved. I know it can't happen overnight. Um, but I just really plead that uh, we do everything we can to uh, do this work um, and do it quickly, efficiently, thoroughly. Um, that's it for me. Thank you. All right, thank you for your comment. Uh, next up, I see uh, Suzanne Atman. Uh, go right ahead. Hi, good evening. Um, first, of all, first of all, I want to thank all of the staff at the NJDP for getting us here to this important point, and of course for valuing health and ecosystems in New Jersey's urban communities, so thank you. Um, also, just a quick thank you to all the permit holders and their consultants for developing these plans, um, and thank you to CCMUA for <clears throat> meeting with us recently and um, shedding some light on, on many points. Uh, so I'm just going to make a few points. Um, as I just mentioned, um, we so we commend the City of Camden and CCMUA for collaborating to ensure that their uh, combined sewer system is cleaned. Um, in an update from CCMUA, we were happy to hear that this work will likely be completed um, within the next year. And unfortunately, um, the need for complete system cleaning extends CCMU's, CCMUA's estimated timeline for completion to 15 years. However, with the system cleaned, the timeline can be shortened um, to by five to 10 years. From discussions with stakeholders and um, after looking at the 2023 Gloucester City Inspection Report that was prepared by DNB Guarino engineers, the most significant construction timeline bottleneck is the cleaning of the regulators and outfalls in Gloucester City. So we're, we're you know, urging the DP to work with Gloucester City and all of the parties there to see how um, you can accelerate the timeline for the cleaning of the system there in Gloucester City. That will then enable CCMUA and other parties to then accelerate the design and planning of the rest of the solutions that would then shorten the timeline. Um, I, I, my understanding is that uh, Gloucester City hasn't responded 
um, to some of the outreach. Um, so if there's anything NJDP can do to, again, work with Gloucester City so that they can um, all come together um, and develop a collaborative plan. Um, <clears throat> in the example of Camden City, Camden City, all of the CCMUA rate, rate payers, including Camden City, pay for the sewer lines and pumping stations that convey the sewage um, into Camden. So we recommend the same approach for Gloucester City's combined sewer system, reducing the cost per rate payer and spreading it out over a population that has a much higher uh, medium household income allows for the project to be completed much more quickly under the EPA's affordability guidelines. And if CCMUA could perhaps be, uh, I'm not sure of the exact technical term, but if they could be a fiscal sponsor or a collaborator when Gloucester City applies for funding, um, that could really uh, make it easier for everyone and, and create a more equitable allocation of cost um, of projects in a manner that is permitted in the CCMUA service agreement. And we know that there is quite a bit of technical assistance that Gloucester City can leverage. And of course, this once in a lifetime federal funding. So again, we think if all the right parties come together to support Gloucester City in this effort, um, we could shorten the time or they could shorten the timeline by five to 10 years, which means right five to 10 years, less pollution into the rivers, into streets, into people's homes. Just a quick note on public engagement. So, of course, thank you again for finalizing the CSO public engagement guidance document um, on the various ways permit holders can successfully engage the public while planning and implementing their plans in the near term. Um, if you, if NJDEP DEP could please encourage permit holders to start that public engagement process as soon as the permits are finalized, um, starting with public notifications about the permit and establishment of the CSO supplemental teams. Um, I, I think I still think there isn't a much clarity in in these municipalities among the permit holders as to when that process starts or what they're required to do. Um, when public engagement needs to kick off. So any any help NJDP can provide in that in that manner. Um, and just similarly have said this, shared this before, but given that important decisions will be made on these CSO supplemental teams, we do remain concerned the public may be underrepresented on those teams since there's no specific requirement for how many community members should participate nor who they should represent. So we highly encourage, again, um, NJDP to require, if possible, that a certain percentage of supplemental teams consist of community representatives, and at least one representative is from um, a flood impacted neighborhood or flood impacted home, so they can represent others and their voice can be heard. The only other point I'll make tonight, and we're going to be submitting, or we actually did submit um, more detailed comments. It's just regarding green infrastructure. Again, we commend CCMUA for the green infrastructure projects they've incorporated into Camden City. Um, I know that it, it really is a role model for other um, municipalities um, and permit holders. It does not seem that meaningful uh, GI projects are being considered in Gloucester City. Um, so again, if we can encourage the um, permit holder to reevaluate opportunities to include green infrastructure there, um, and benefit just as Camden City will be benefiting. That would be wonderful. Okay, thank you for your time. All right, thank you for your comments. And next up, I have Kevin Barfield. Thank you for including your email address and your full name. So um, please go right ahead. Kevin Barfield, if you're speaking, we can't hear you.
All right, Kevin, if you don't want to provide any comments and you just want a copy of the final decision, just note that um, if you could put that in the chat. Oh, OK, I see that you're not, you're having a problem with your mic uh, connecting. Uh, we will give you a few minutes. Well, um, we'll uh, just I don't see any other names listed. Uh, there's no one who can go ahead of you, so. Um, we'll give you a few minutes to try and get your microphone working. Um, hey, excuse me. I'm having trouble um, saying I want to participate in the chat. Can I um, comment during this time? Sure, sure, sure. If you would please just give us your first and last name, organization, and your email address, and you can go right ahead, uh, and that will give uh, Kevin Barfield additional time to get his to get ready. Cool. Go um, ahead. Thank you so much. Sorry about the um, weird technical thing I'm dealing with. Um, so my name is Lucia Osborne. That's L-U-C-I-A. O S B O R N E, and um, I work for the American Literal Society. And my email address is Lucia L U C I A at literal L I T T O R A L Society dot org. Um, and my comments are brief. You know, I just wanted to say thank you for the opportunity to speak, and thank you to um, the permittees for their hard work in putting together these permits. Um, and you know, you can really see, especially the CCMUA is, uh, you know, working hard to improve the conditions in Camden, and we really appreciate that. Um, I am not an engineer, and so I can't pretend to to understand the complexities of what they're doing. Um, and wanting to recognize that, you know, there are certain things that need to be done specifically specifically the cleaning of the pipes um, and specifically that, you know, that needs to be done both in Camden and in count and in Gloucester. Um, with that said, and I know, you know, there are bottlenecks that are happening um, and I appreciate the need for them to be thorough and wanting to be really effective in their work in engineering. Um, but I just don't want to lose sight of how urgent these issues are and how important it is um, to protect water quality in the river, to prevent you know, people's basements from flooding and, and to really consider the, the health and safety of the, of the residents in Camden and, and how that is affected by um, combined sewer overflow systems. So just wherever it is reasonably possible, um, to please you know do everything we can to accelerate this work whether that means taking a staggered approach working with the pipes that have already been cleaned or using existing models to to do some preliminary designs while they're waiting to get to that monitoring phase um anything they can do to to you know get us from 15 to maybe 10 maybe even five years um i just think is super important um and the other thing i just want to point out is is um climate resiliency we are expected to to see an increase in precipitation um as a result of climate change and wanting to make sure that we're prepared for that um, and thinking about that as we make upgrades to our systems. Um, and that's all I have, so thank you. All right, thank you for your comments. And uh, if you were the person who had raised your hand, if you could please unraise it. Oh, sorry. No problem, no problem. I just don't want to miss anyone. All right, uh, Kevin Barfield, if you can, uh, uh, Susan has kindly put in the call in number. Uh, if you can use your cell phone, there is a conference ID there. If, if your computer isn't working out, we'll give you a few more minutes.
Hello. I heard something very quick. Hello. Yep, oh, I heard you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, you're you're clear. Go right ahead, and uh, okay. you can provide your testimony. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, again, I want to. My name is Kevin Barfield. I've been a resident of Camden for 58 years. And um, you know, first again, thanking you know the DEP for this opportunity. Um, definitely thanking CCUM for actually meeting with us to give us more of a better insight to um, the particular barriers that is kind of impeding this project. Uh, my comment and concern is also about the cost and the timeline because of the um, flooding problem and issue that we're having in Camden. And um, even when it comes to the cost, you know, because of the fact that we have, you know, multiple municipalities, um, we know that there's a lot that's contributing to the overflow problem and just the basic infrastructure um, and even the added redevelopment um, that I'm hoping that they find you know, another way to help finance this project and then not be a burden on Camden residents. You know, we see that even when it comes to this um, long range, um, you know, plan, long term control plan, that, you know, some of the uh, communities or not one community in particular that's benefited from it is not in, it would not be in the decree. And somewhere along the line, you know, funding has been found for them you know, grant funding on the state level has been, you know, found for them to have be able to have their lines separated into Camden. Um, I don't know what the situation is in Gloucester, but, you know, I'm hoping that um, the DEP can help them, you know, fast track, um, you know, that process, because as long as that, you know, their, um, they don't get their over, um, flows clean, then that's going to delay the project for everyone. And, you know, I know that, you know, sometimes people are looking for other means to um, finance these projects, but um, I'm hoping that's not another situation where um, funding is found for Gloucester City, but not, you know, you know, Camden. So, again, my concern is the cost, um, along with the timeline, and finding somewhere that we can, um, you know, um, relieve some of this flooding within the city and residents and their housing. And, um, and then also, again, when it was talked about the public um, uh, representation, there definitely needs to be um, public, you know, representation at the table when these um, supplemental teams are actually, in, you know, in place. So, you know, that's what I have to say when it comes to this particular project. You know, again, thank you guys for all the work that you're doing. Um, I see that, you know, especially when it comes to this particular situation, it's, you know, it didn't happen overnight. So, and I know that there's something that's, you know, that you need strategic planning and resources is, you know, is paramount. So, but again, I'm, I'm concerned that a lot of um, the ills of the surrounding municipality always seem to fall on Camden residents, which we know statistically is um, basically has a high level of uh, poverty and the residents just, you know, can't take on that particular task. So that's what I wanted to say in reference to, um, you know, this situation. That's it. All right, thank you for your comments. I appreciate uh, that uh, you were able to get in and get your comments. Um, I don't see anyone else in the chat uh, who wants to speak at this time. So what I'll do is I will put us on hold for five minutes and at uh, 6.59, I will uh, check back in. And uh, if no one has any comments at that point, we'll close the hearing. But if someone wants to uh, comment in, in the next minute, we'll accommodate you. So we'll, we'll take a quick break. Just be on hold. Thank you.
All right, everyone, it's been five minutes. No one else has entered their name in the chat to uh, provide testimony. So um, if there are, this is the last call. Uh, if anyone else wants to speak, please uh, put your name in quickly. If not, I think we'll close the hearing for the evening. We'll just give it a couple seconds. All right, it looks like we're done. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Oh, and uh, just I uh, would like to just uh, uh, remind everyone the public comment period ends tonight at 11.59 p.m. So thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.